Y este actor, en verdad, ha estado en, en series pequeñas como, I don't know, Doctor Who. O Vanessa Galáctica. Maybe Doom Patrol. Y uno bien chiquitito que se llama... Supernatural. Hola. Hola. So, here we are. This is the panel of Mark Shepard! Hey, Mark. It's over here. <laughs> okay, he's saying that. <laughs> okay, let's do it. One more, please, one. Mark Shepard. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> Say hi, yeah! You good? He's like a teacher, checking that everybody's doing their homework. That's good, that's good. You're welcome. Hey guys. Hello, Puerto Rico. So, mom doesn't want to be here, but, but uh, Junior here made mom come. So we're going to make sure mom has the best time ever, right? Take a oh, picture. Do what he says. <laughs> yes, it's embarrassing. <laughs> but we love you and we're glad you came. Okay? Now, I'm going to go up there and I'm going to go annoy that lady up there. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to be mean to everybody else, just so you know, so don't take it personal. All right, well, I hope you have a better day. All right. Watch out for the weather. Puerto Rican weather is interesting. It is. Food's good, though. We're going to talk about that now. You want to talk about the food? What's the oh, good yeah. way up? I have to go round, don't I? I'm too short to climb up there. I'm not leaving now. Right, I'm not leaving. I'm coming back. <laughs> One morning, while Mark Shepard entered the stage. Now I've decided I'm going to do it from back here now. <laughs> Hey guys! Right, what do you want to know? Hurry up. This is your throne. Yeah, hurry up. It's not my throne. This is a white right. chair. Yeah, I know. So uh, comfortable. So, what do you want? What I want. I want to know. This is a very traditional question here. Traditional? Yeah. Like we gotta ask every old. guest. Oh, okay. Have you eaten mofongo today? Uh, Maybe. Maybe it's like smashed plantain. Yes, that's what yeah. I had. Yeah. Okay. With the sauce, which is the chicken stock reduced with the garlic and a little bit of citrus. Oh, yeah, that's so what I had for lunch. Have you enjoyed yourself so yeah. far? Yeah. Well, you see, the guys are looking after me, Alvin and, and Mikey. I said I want to eat something Puerto Rican, proper Puerto Rican. So they went out to a restaurant. Yeah. And they brought me a pork chop about this size, with the skin on the back. Different oh, beans, yeah. the rice with the garbanzo beans, oh. the rice with black beans, the rice, I had everything, they got me everything I liked. Dude, and lechon, lechon asado with the skin, everything. So, real Puerto Rican food. <laughs> Makes me happy. You're making Actually, so I'm hungry. hungry. I'm, I'm going to go back and go eat okay. now. <laughs> Listen, I'm so happy to be here, guys. Seriously. I, I've never been to Puerto Rico before. Uh, I know a lot of your countrymen and countrywomen from. Obviously, every time I'm in New York, but uh, uh, it is a pleasure to be here. I got happy. I was flying in from Miami, and I flew in like right over the bay and looked. I was like, "Man, this place is beautiful." And I got off the plane, and then it rained. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Puerto Rico. <laughs> People are fantastic. It's you guys are so kind, and I, I appreciate a lot of you. We love not just you know. I've been on a lot of shows, not just Supernatural. But I know how big Supernatural is here and all over the world. And we are so grateful that we get to travel to come and see you 
you know, when you can't always come and see us. So yes. we're, we're really proud to come and see you and, uh, and complete the circle, you know what I mean? <laughs> so thank you for being here, guys. I have a running joke with my boyfriend because he You're loves... just boasting that you have a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, kind of. But um, How long have you been together? Eight years. And he hasn't asked you to marry him? Not yet. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Maybe he will ask after this? Eight years? Yeah. Is he Catholic? No. Eight years. Yeah. Yeah, why, you know, why buy the cow when you get the milk for free, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You, you need to sing some Beyonce to him. Yeah, okay. If you like it, you gotta put a ring on it. Yeah? yeah? Am I right? Every guy's sitting there going. The guy's going, oh man, this is gonna cost me money. Oh, no. <laughs> I gotta buy a ring now. Shepard is telling me to get married now. No, I'm telling your boyfriend to propose. <laughs> so, I, we have the running joke is that every single time we watch a show, we're looking for you. And we love Star Trek, so one time we saw you and we were like, oh, Mark Shepard. And then it was like Warehouse 13, freaking love that show, by the way. Such a great show. And now, you know, I am addictive to Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol is fantastic. Yeah. You guys, everyone here get like HBO Max? Yeah. Right, if you don't, see the people that said yes. <laughs> ask, them, ask them for their password. <laughs> because you're gonna love it and you're gonna end up buying it anyway, so we're happy. <laughs> but I'm saying I love this show. This show has uh, Brendan Fraser. Yeah. Matt Bomer from White Collar. Uh, Timothy Dalton, who was James Bond, uh, Diane Guerrero from Orange is the New Black, and now in Canto. She sang at the Oscars, she was incredible. Yeah. Uh, April Bowlby from Two and a Half Men and many other things. Uh, first year is Alan Tudyk, of course, from Firefly and lots of other shows. It is a beautiful show. It is a inclusive, bizarre, strange show, and if you haven't yeah. seen it, Watch the pilot and see if you like it, because I love it. I, yeah. And we're going to the fourth season now. Are you going to be in the fourth? Yeah, I've got to go to work on yes. Monday. <laughs> I literally just got back from shooting a pilot in New Mexico on, I can't even know what day it was, like Thursday. Yeah. Got on the plane Friday. No, Thursday night I got on the plane. So I finished, I finished Wednesday, got on the plane to Miami mm -hmm. at one in the morning on Thursday. Flew here to, from Miami. The only, by the way, Miami airport, you can smoke in Miami airport. Oh. They have a TGI Fridays, where it is outside but inside, and you can smoke. So I had a nice Cuban cigar in the airport in the morning and then got a flight to, uh, to someone. So I was very happy to be here. So Monday I leave, unfortunately, but oh. uh, I will come back here because it's so beautiful and the people are so nice. So nice. In the patrol, which is freaking great, is Kip. His name is Kipling. I call him Kip, you know. He has, he, I mean, he it's has great power. It's Constantine. Yeah. Constantine was, yeah, not, sure. was not allowed to be put in uh, Vertigo Comics by Grant Morrison when he created mm -hmm. Doom Patrol, well, the second version of Doom Patrol. And so he created another character called Willoughby Kipling, and it's really Constantine. So I get to play Constantine in this. You'll like it. And it's also, fun. you yeah. have an interesting relationship with Baphomet, the head yes, of a horse. Yes, I, I have a, a, a long-term loving relationship with a... Uh, horse's head. Two meter high blue horse's head with a railroad spike in its forehead. Yeah. How does that relationship work? Well, you'll see. <laughs> oh, so you're going to ask her out? You have to see. You have to see in uh, season four. <laughs> and it may just be a torso to you, but it's love. That is true. What was your reaction when you read the first time that? Well, I knew about Doom Patrol, I knew about the comics. So when Jeremy, Jeremy Carver, who was the showrunner on Supernatural from seasons eight through 11, well, some of 11, um, uh, my favorite showrunner, um, he picks up Doom Patrol and he's like, do you want to play Willoughby Kipling in Doom Patrol? And I said, which Doom Patrol are you doing? And he goes, it's like the Grant Morrison one. And I said, yes, in a second. 
and it's crazy. You can't binge it. You can't binge this show. There's too much going on. Put it this way. The second episode, an entire town disappears up the ass of a donkey. <laughs> Let's not talk about the butt. Where butts? The butts. Oh my God. How was it fighting them? It's, well, some of them are real and some of them are CGI. Okay, so maybe but Brandon's butts, butts? with teeth and yeah. legs and arms. It's, it's awful. amazing. It's awful. <laughs> and now there's zombie wear butts. That, that, that one is one of my favorite episodes so That's far. a fun episode too. So in this season, uh, last season, season three, Michelle Gomez joined the, joined the uh, uh, cast. <laughs> She's fantastic. She was obviously Missy in Doctor Who and, and a lot of other things, and uh, she's in Flight Attendant. Mm -hmm. She's incredible. So if, I'm telling you, watch this show. So many of your favorite actors from Supernatural show up in little areas, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And now there's a spin-off, uh, yeah. uh, the Dead Boy Detective Agency, Dead Boy Detectives. Oh, yeah. That's a, which is a Neil Gaiman property is span off from season three of, uh, of Doom Patrol mm -hmm. and now that's just been picked up yesterday. Oh, that was So it's now a series, so you look out for that. And Rowena from Supernatural <laughs> is playing a witch in Dead Boy. <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> I'm pretty sure people want to talk about yeah, Supernatural, let's have, right? Let's, let's have some questions. Um, I want to ask you first, what? how was it coming in to a show that was already established? Well, it, wasn't, it wasn't already established in season five. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't as big in season five. Yeah. It was supposed to end in season five. And so I was part of that, that sort of group that changed it and made it possible to do season six and on. But nobody had any idea it would be 15 years. I mean, by 12, I was done. I'd had enough. It was like, <laughs> it, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. There wasn't much to do for my character in season 12. And I'm very happy that my friends got to work for another three years. Yeah. But it, there really wasn't any room for me at that point. Mm -hmm. So it was important for me to leave well, you know, leave a, a good character that I enjoyed. It was a lot of fun to do. So thanks. But look at you guys. I mean, Put your hands up if you've watched Supernatural more than three times. More oh than God. three times. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay, you know what? Let's... Put, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Put your hands up if you've got somebody to watch Supernatural who's old, who's 15 or 16 years old. There you go. There you go. <laughs> See, that's where the new the new fans are and the new. This show will never die. It yeah. will never die. I don't care if they make a spin-off. It doesn't mean anything to me. But we did something and it's a big, long show. And wherever we go in the world. You know, I hate the word fans. The word fan in English comes from the word fanatic. Fanatic is not a good word. Fanatic is a very negative word. And so I look at the word fan as a negative word. So we came up with the idea of calling it the supernatural family. And so worldwide, you know, even if you've watched one episode and you like it, you're a part of the Supernatural family. <laughs> so that's what we, you know. I can't go anywhere in the world. I cannot go anywhere in the world without being recognized, uh, mostly for Supernatural. A lot of other shows that I've done, but mostly for Supernatural. Yeah. And I, I, I love it, and I love you guys so much. We all do. We really appreciate you, and, and the show will never die. <laughs> kind of like all the characters. And we love you too. Okay. Let's take some questions. Yeah. Should we take some questions? Yes. Let's do it. Okay, so anyone who has a question can go do a line carefully Why are you in waving front of your the arms? microphone. Why are you waving yeah. your arms? Yeah, don't be shy. Come on over. We'll try to answer as best we can. Yeah. Okay. We're doing the line now. Okay. You have a question for me? Yes. Go how? <laughs> Uh, hi, um, uh, I'm Andy, and my question for you is, um, it's uh, not from Supernatural actually, well, this question goes for, uh, goes for both Supernatural and Doctor Who, um, what is your like, favorite memory that you have of filming? The, the, the question is mainly for, mainly for Doctor Who, but you can also answer it for the Supernatural. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you can, um... Anything else I can do for you? 
you want to oh. clean your windows, do anything else? <laughs> um, you asked me a good question. Do you want me to answer the question? Uh, I have two questions. Oh. That and uh, was how. Uh, <laughs> Hurry up! Go, go, go! Uh, how was it working with Matt Smith? How's it working with Matt Smith? How was Why don't you ask Matt Smith how it was working with I honestly wish I could because I love I can answer that question in your first question. Okay. So you ready? Yeah. So what, what I love most about doing Doctor Who was the fact that in between those scenes, which are very complex and very difficult to shoot, uh, especially in England, it's, it's a very different system than the American system. There's less money, there's less time, and there's more work. Um, they all sang to each other. <laughs> They sang to each other, like almost like choral singing. So in between, you know, tech, tech setups or takes, they were just singing and in happy mood. It was like it was lovely. It made me happy. They're lovely people. They really are lovely people. And I was lucky to do that. You know, I was asked to do that role, and I was like, okay. And I was doing Supernatural at the time, and I couldn't get the time to do Doctor Who. I couldn't. There was no way to make it work. And so Doctor Who called up and flipped their schedule because you know, uh, these dates don't work i'm sorry i have to turn it down i was miserable and then i got a phone call the next day after i turned it down and they said are you working now like right now i said no i'm not working for a week and a half and they said well can you come tomorrow i'm like yep <laughs> and i didn't have permission from warner brothers to go <laughs> So I had to make phone calls. They're like, tell us you haven't got on a plane to go to England. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. So I called up Sarah Gamble, who was season six and seven. I think it was in season six, this was. And I went, um, I think I've made a mistake. What, what have you done? I said, I've said yes to going to England. Fine, go to England, you'll be okay. So we got to do Doctor Who because of Supernatural. So, so it worked out great. And Supernatural, my favorite time ever. Really simple. One thing, the end of season eight, that was the best thing we've ever done. It's the most cohesive, the most uni uniting, the most, uh, if you watch the end of, no, two things you need to watch about Supernatural. The end of season eight to see us acting together is the best things we did. And then go online and watch Nerd HQ in San Diego which we would go and do after we finished all the work we have to do at Comic-Con in San Diego. And those Nerd HQ panels, I don't drink, but the rest of them do. Yeah. So they're all drunk, all happy, and you will actually hear what we're really like with each other. And it's fun. So uh, Zachary Levi, you know Shazam, Zachary Levi, and Chuck. Um, he is the, the main host on one year, and Aisha Tyler is the main host on another year. But there's two of them, which is the four of us. And if you really want to see what we're like together, that's what we're like together. Thank you for your question. Thank Anna. you. Hi, nice to meet you. You too. My question is, what was the most difficult thing to record in Supernatural? Most difficult thing was the end of season eight, because we shot it in sequence. Very often you don't get to to do television in order because it's not, uh, it costs too much money to do, say the first scene is in a hotel and you shoot that scene in a hotel and at the end of the episode, you, you finish in the hotel, but in the middle you've been everywhere else. You have to shoot that first scene and that last scene at the same time. You have to shoot that before, because you can't take everybody to the hotel, set it up, film it, go do the rest of the show and then come back to that place. It's too expensive. So for technical uh, purposes, the end of season eight from the church, from outside the church to inside the church. If you watch it, you'll understand. It's all shot in sequence. Each scene is shot after each scene. And so it's an amazing thing to do. Three days out of the seven days, we're working in order. And so it got bigger and bigger and bigger until you get to the angels falling and all the good stuff. But uh, that was the best time we had. Thank you. Hey. Hello. I have um, my my tracking is a two-part tracking. My fourth tracking is what was it like doing Doom Patrol? And and can you tell us if you can um, what can we expect from season four of Doom Patrol? Okay. Uh, what was it like doing Doom Patrol? Crazy, beautiful, fun. Um, it is, I think, not deliberately, but factually, the most inclusive show I've ever worked on in my life because the writing staff, 
and the actors are so diverse and from so many different areas and different backgrounds and different uh, uh, different political views and different personal views um, that there is so much inclusivity in the show without it being woke, you know, which I, de I despise. I like things being real and reflecting, you know, the universe the way we see it rather than... Uh, so I think it's beautiful. I think the show is beautiful and, and caring and loving and inclusive in a different way than any other show. Uh, you know, it's not Supergirl, it's not The Boys. It's something else. And season four, I can, I can tell you exactly what to expect from season four. More. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think one of the things that I love about the show is that you know that the people behind it are passionate and so loving and caring for the characters yeah. that it makes it more special. Every show that I've been lucky enough to enjoy doing seems to be the shows that you guys like me being in. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like Who is a, is a labor of love. You know, Supernatural is, you know, nearly a decade of my life. Um, Battlestar. Well, you know, Battlestar is, is exceptional. Edward, Edward James Olmos. And, and I mean, just, it, it's, if you've not seen it, it is sci-fi with a beginning, a middle, and an end. It wasn't cancelled. It literally has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's West Wing in space. It's, it's not Star Trek. It's not any of those things. It's something else. Firefly was a show that, that people love, but it, you know, it ended so quickly. Now it would be on for 10 years, you know? With streaming, if it was on Netflix, it would be a, a big hit, but um, it didn't work for having it on Fox back then. Um, you know, even Warehouse 13 is so much fun to do. X-Files, I was in first season of X-Files, and you see that grow and grow. So all the shows I've loved doing, you know, it's, it's the shows you love. And the reason why is because I'm a, fan too. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm somebody, I don't trust anybody who isn't a fan of something. I hate the word, but you know what I mean, right? I don't trust anybody that doesn't absolutely go batshit crazy over something. You know? I think people's lives are empty if they don't. They, you know, I think the bravest thing in the world, like you came here in costume, you, you made costumes, you took your time, a lot of you are in costume, right? Yeah. 25 years ago, 30 years ago, people throw things at you if you wore a costume. You can go to a convention now and you're special for doing so. You're wearing your heart on your sleeve, literally. And I applaud you for that. You are showing the things that you love on the outside, not just on the inside. And no longer is that a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing, you know? And you've got moms and dads, you know, bringing their kids to these places and, and seeing just how amazing these things are. You know what I mean? And, you know, a lot of the moms and dads were fans of their own stuff. And, you know, yeah, it's a little harder for me with anime because I can't keep up with all the characters, but I don't have the time. I really don't. Um, but I've got friends who do the voices for all those anime characters. And it's like, it's, it's an amazing world, and I love that. But your costumes are just beautiful. I love what you do. I love the fact that dyeing your hair now doesn't make you a crazy person or a punk rocker. You know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's a positive identity thing, you know? And we don't care about your sexuality and your, you know, who you love or who you don't love. Well, nobody cares about this stuff here. You don't see people stabbing people here or robbing people here or, or being mean to each other here. You know, I think we had one violent outburst at Comic-Con San Diego. There's like 250,000 people in the area, right? One guy stabbed another guy in the hand with a pencil. What? And we think it was over a girl. And it, I think it just broke the skin. That oh, was it, okay. just a little bit. Just broke yeah. the skin a little bit. That was the most violent thing that ever happened at Comic-Con. <laughs> they were like, ooh, this is bad. I love that. I think that's the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> you never see like seven, you know, uh, seven anime fans rob a 7-Eleven. You know, it never happens. <laughs> But you'll see 20, you know, somebody has a panic attack, you'll see 50 people go help them. That's what you see at conventions. The reason why we come to conventions is because it's a, a loving and kind atmosphere. It's inclusive, it's caring, and you will make friends. Whether you like it or not, you're going to make friends. You know what I'm saying? Nobody is on their own here, you know? 
you, you're connected by things, and that's really special to me. It is. Go ahead. Nice to meet you. As, Hi. As part of the family for many years, my mom introduced me to Supernatural. Uh, tell, tell your mom that I love her very much. <laughs> Will do. I'm and I'll see her on Thursday. <laughs> I'll make sure to tell her that. So, my question is, did you ever have an idea for the show or your character Crowley that never came to fruition? Yes. <laughs> Care to elaborate a bit more? Oh, you want me to elaborate? Yeah. Well, listen, you know how much I love uh, Rowena, you know how much I love Ruth. Not only as a person, but she's a fabulous actress. There's one thing that always pissed me off, and that's that Crowley cannot have a mother. It doesn't make sense, because Crowley is not Fergus. Fergus is Fergus, Crowley is Crowley, and it makes no sense at all. Now, if Rowena had been my ex-wife... The conflict. Imagine how many years that would go on for. Oh, I know some divorced people here. <laughs> Don't give yourselves away. Um, but that's the thing, those sort of things. Um, I, had, I did something for the end and it didn't quite manifest the way I wanted it to. And that kind of annoyed me, but I understood. But that would have been the greatest one, I think, ever. And we'd have our own spin-off series now. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. Say hi to Mom. Don't oh, forget. No. Thursday. <laughs> Next. Hi. Hello, mate. Nice try. Go on. <laughs> Do you see me speaking Spanish? Yeah. Terrible. I've got the worst accent. I want to hear you. I can do French. French is easy for me. Spanish is so hard. And you guys are so different. I traveled the world and there are so many differences in Spanish speaking countries. Puerto Rico does not sound like Mexican to me. It doesn't sound like Spanish to me. It's right in the middle. It's in the middle of something and it's got all these interesting different cultures that come from. Like Cuban is, uh, Cubano is completely different than Puerto Rican. You know, in the span of Haiti, my God, I have a chance. It's all mixed with French. But, um, like, you guys are so individually different, I think it's fantastic. But your accents are very difficult to do. So you'll pronounce your names if I'm signing, and I'm like, I think I know what that is, but it doesn't sound. <laughs> and I've signed every, you know, every Spanish name you can imagine, from Spain to South America. Uh, but it's like, here, pronunciations are different, spellings are a little different. I love that. That's why you are so fantastic. Okay. What do you want? <laughs> Mate. We've seen in the past that people that work with supernatural films uh, have lived rare experiences. I would like to know if you, uh, during or after filming Supernatural, if you had any weird experience or something that you can consider right, a supernatural? A supernatural experience? Yeah. Well, it's a bit personal, isn't it? <laughs> have you seen my wife? That is a supernatural experience. I'm, I, my wife is beautiful. I have no idea how a hobbit like this. Maybe because she's a big Lord of the Rings fan. That's maybe what it is. But, um, but yeah, I mean, man, the, the world is supernatural. The universe is supernatural. It's about opening your heart and your mind to things that you maybe don't understand. My God, my concept of God is supernatural. My concept of life is supernatural. You know, I don't like to reduce things to the human experience. I like to believe there's a universe and, you know, let's put it this way. It all comes down to love. Thank you. Fear, hate, uh, anguish, pain, anxiety, stress, all these things can be helped with love. So that's the only thing that's important. Thank you. That's why your, your wife chose you, right there. Yeah, I think she was shopping around. I was the only one she could find. <laughs> I don't know, she's really, right now, um, there's a certain actor whose first name is Pedro. Okay. And uh, she's got the hots for that guy. I'm hoping to God I never work with him. She's, she's a big Mandalorian fan. <sighs> And I'm like, 
hmm, Pedro, she goes, mm-hmm. So say we all. I'm like, damn. And he's a little bit taller than me. I'm a bit cuter than him. And my voice is deeper. Yeah. But yeah, I gotta look out. That's gonna be scary. If I get a gig with him, I'm screwed. That's it. It's over. Hi. Hi. Um, so Crowley was my favorite character in Supernatural. Good. And so <laughs> I wanted to know if there was any part of him that really resonated with you. That yeah, I killed millions of people. Maybe. Maybe you related to that. You know, I'm an actor, right? That helped you make the great performance. You're just going to keep fighting through. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I applaud you. Well done. Good, good try. Um, are you asking me about whether there's bits of me in it? Yeah, that helped you. Um, yeah, I killed lots of people. It's, it's real easy. I snap my fingers, people disappear. Listen, imagination is everything. Imagination is everything. When they wrote it originally, it was one episode. One episode. I'm there eight years later. So yes, there's, there's bits of me in it, but it's like, what if? If I was, then what would I do? Does that make sense? Same reason as you come in costume, or you don't come in costume, it's, but it's um, the same reason as you identify with a character. I also identify with a character. But uh, me, not so much. I love the fact that he's pansexual and annoying and difficult and you can never quite work out what he's doing and that he always wins. That's what I love about Crowley. He always wins. Even when he loses, he wins. I love that. That's my quote. I, love, I wrote I love that. that quote. Even when I lose, I win. It never made it into the show, so I had to make a t-shirt. I hate it that it didn't make it. I want that shirt, by the way, but it sold out. I, yeah, I know. We'll do it again. Good. Thank you for your question, darling. What do you want? Well, Who'd you come as? Uh, Willoughby Kipling. I like it. <laughs> Love it. See? Yeah, well, That's the way to go. <laughs> and you know why I have the gloves, the fingerless gloves? Because uh, no. I have a flaming sword. I don't burn my fingers. Well, Sorry, go on. No, it's okay. Uh, well, actually, my question is pertaining to Willoughby Kipling and Crowley. My question is, how would Willoughby Kipling match against Crowley? We never cross the streams. We never cross the streams. That's for you to write. Right? That's what fan fiction's for. Right? right there you go. So write the book, let me know how it works out. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Hi. Hello. I was going to wear that. Another one, I can find one. Thank you. And backstage, backstage. Okay. But I'm Emmy, and I'm just a big fan. I've been a fan for years. My mom got me into the show, so plus for her, I mean, really. And oh, the mom. The mom know what's up. My aunt too. But I want to ask you, as I know you're a fan of music, what's something that really drove you to create Crowley? What was something that you had like an internal theme song, like that? Try Mr. Song? Crowley. You know the song Mr. Crowley? No, I yeah. Mm. So Nazi Osborne singing the lyrics? Now I have to look it up. I feel yes, cold. It's a little older than you. But there's a song called Mr. Crowley. Go work that out. I'm only 20. I'll go do it. How old are you? I'm going to turn 20. 20? I've got socks older than you. <laughs> yes. So thank you. Thank you for coming over here and we really appreciate it. Oh, I love being here. Thank you so much. Speak into the mic, darling. They want to hear too. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, of all the characters you've played, which one is your favorite? The ones you like. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You know, you know, you can tell. We are, we are a discerning audience. Years ago, for example, right? Star Wars was really big. They didn't expect Star Wars to be big. They really didn't. And it became a phenomenon. And people of my generation, um, that was the thing for them. That was something for us. Something for us, right? And we had comic books and we had all these things and then suddenly the comic books start coming to life. But what they did in between is they started putting out TV shows that were copies of things that were successful. So you had, um, but the first Battlestar Galactica was kind of a ripoff for Star Wars fans. And it wasn't really what Battlestar was about. But years later, Ron Moore makes Battlestar Galactica and it's fantastic. So it took out all of the 
um, all of the cynicism. You know the word cynicism? Is that a good word in Spanish? Yes, yeah, yeah. Right, so the cynicism, making something for money. And what's happened is you are the audience that decides what is successful or not. You are now the audience. You vote by logging in or stealing it or, or watching it or whatever, all these things. And now they're having to make things well. Because if it's not done well, you don't like it. It doesn't stay. So in the old days when we had three TV channels, whatever they put on, you kind of had to like. Now we have a thousand choices. So it's, it better be good. So that's the difference. So the stuff I've enjoyed doing is the best stuff. And the best stuff is the stuff we like. You know what I mean? I've been lucky enough to be in seven, eight, nine different things that people just think is the greatest shows. And that's why I've enjoyed it so much. It's because they're really great shows. So it's, if you like it, I probably like it too. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dan. You're safe. Thank you. Hi. Hello. So, uh, first of all, long live the king. Um, the king is dead, long live the king is actually the quote. <laughs> My bad. That's not the best quote to use to me. I'm sorry. Uh, so That's where long live the king comes from. The king is dead. Come on, long live the king. Oh, anyway, come. Okay, so um, one of my favorite parts of uh, Supernatural is seeing uh, Crowley insult his uh, lackeys, demons. With this in mind, can I ask you to insult me as if I was one of those demons and insult <laughs> No. Okay. That was actually the best way I could insult you. That's the perfect crowd. No. Thank you. you. All you want to hear is, hello, boys. Thank you. Life is simple. I said, but, but why not? No one in the history of torture has been tortured with torture like the torture you'll be tortured with. What? No one in the history of torture okay. has been tortured with torture like the torture you'll be tortured with. Yeah. You know why that sentence annoys me? What? It ends with a preposition. It says with at the end. Because you go, no one in the history of torture has been tortured with torture like the torture you'll be tortured with. Torture? With? Torture? Torture with, torture with, torture. That's why it annoys me. Actually, yeah, no, it's annoying. It is annoying. Yeah. Not as good as, hello, boys. Yeah. I could do this all day. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Get out. Hello, I think you see me. I can't see, you need to stand up. <laughs> um, I just want to say it's not a question, it's more of a thank you. Um, the thing is that my husband was hospitalized several years ago and they had cut out half of his leg, so we had to cancel the Comic Con from 2019 and we had to stay at home. So we got by by watching Netflix and one of the things we watched that he introduced me was Supernatural. And because of that, uh, that entertained us, that took away our, the things that were basically uh, troubling us. And he's fine now, he can walk and everything. And he's a big fan. And, I, and thanks to him, I'm a big fan to him. For me, the most inter interesting character is Broly. He's one of the, best characters, the best villain in the series. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for... Uh, well, thank you. Stay there one second. Stay there. One moment. While he comes down the stairs. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Lions Den, and he works and he works there. Uh, Fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's a lovely thing. I'm so I'm so proud of you guys. Well done. Yeah. Appreciate um, it. I don't work in private Oh, an even harder job. You're a teacher. Thank you for what you do. You're in the battleground at the front with our bratty kids. <laughs> Thank you, my darling. I appreciate you very much. Oh. Oh, well, there you go. Well, so, thank you for coming, my darling. Thank you for your story. Well, thank you. Okay. So, come here, you. I've got a question for you. 
Come closer, microphone. Yes? Who did you come as? Um, a tax accountant. <laughs> Castiel. Who? Um, Castiel, the angel. Who? Castiel, the angel of the Lord. Who? Dean's boyfriend. <laughs> Don't remember that, but uh, yeah. I've never heard of her. Oh, really? Only who is she? Oh, no, it's a he. Um, a very good friend of yours? Oh, I know who it is. It's Constantine. It's Constantine, but you couldn't afford a red tie. Ah, that makes yeah. sense. So, go on. What's your question? Okay. Better be a good question. Yeah, so if, it's, yeah. if it's not a good question, I'm going to tell you to leave. No, no, no. Okay, first of all, I wanted to say thank you. That's not a question. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it, thank you so much because my dad was the one that introduced me and my husband. He's the one over there in the... the uh, that's dad? Here. No, 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 that's my husband. Joking. That would have been scary. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. Unfortunately, my dad passed away like three years ago. Sorry for putting the mood down. That's not a mood down. <laughs> hey, he I'm really sorry, my darling. Hand. It's fine. Oh, God. Okay, I'm sentimental. <laughs> so? So my dad, my dad just passed a couple, yeah, couple of years ago. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. And you know he was an actor? And he was 86 years old, and he worked until he was 85 years oh old. God. And I wouldn't have wished him an extra day. But I, he, had a, he had a wonderful life. Yeah, I'm saying with that too. My dad was a huge, huge fan. fan. He would watch reruns when he was uh, the, the disabled. And he would literally watch the show, and he was one of your favorite characters. You were Bobby. Oh. So it was great. And my character, Castiel, if you were. Yeah, I can't believe you dressed like that. That's just like that. I mean, if you really cared about me, you would come in a suit. No, I think my husband was going to come as, uh, like, with... What's wrong with you? <laughs> you, came, you came as a uh, banana character. salesman? Joseph, yes. no. Joseph Joestar. Nice colors, by the way. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, he, well, he was actually a good friend, whatever, that's why I signed up, I think. And I want to appreciate your hard work and all those years in Supernatural what you guys did. It was uh, really good for my dad, it was really good for me, and it's been a pleasure just to You too, my darling. It makes it all worthwhile. Give me a hug. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, no questions. You don't. Okay, okay no, 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 no question. Which, uh, I know that there were a lot of pranks on that. That's not a question. Set. Yeah, but uh, who was the most chill of all the cast members? Me. Go sit down. Okay. <laughs> I didn't expect for you to be so close to me. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I've been eating lots of garlic as well for lunch. You could put her in food, so I'm going to smell of garlic while I'm talking to you. Hi. I try not to burp. Hi. Uh, I want to start off by saying uh, thank you for being part of my childhood. How thank old are you? I'm um, 22. You're still a child. <laughs> Legally, I'm not, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean... Uh, my dad was the one who introduced me to Supernatural. And I I'm, I'm loving the dads in Puerto Rico right now. <laughs> the dads and the moms. Dads and the moms have been introducing you guys. I, you know what? I love you. I love your moms and dads. You tell them from me that I'm proud to see them. Thank you, moms and dads. So, um, particularly, it got me through like some personal stuff too, uh, because I started watching, I think, on the TV in particular since like season seven or eight. But uh, then you went back and watched the whole thing. Uh, yeah. How many times? Uh, three, four times. And now go watch Doom Patrol. <laughs> yes, please. Listen, whatever, whatever it is that you went through, whatever it is you've been going through, you got through it. Don't ever forget that. We are proud to have the themes and the ideas that so many people are attracted to. The themes of family, the themes of unity, looking after each other, blood stick of the motor oil or whatever the hell it is. Uh, but, making fun, but you did it. So the next time you get into difficulty, remember that you did it. We're happy to help, and we love the fact that we get to help. But we didn't do it, you did it. So there is nothing you cannot do. Oh you are free. Okay. Oh okay. Yeah, you did it. Hard, we didn't do it, you did it. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Thank you. You good? Yeah. Right. And you can bet that my dad is jealous right now. Uh, absolutely. From home, yeah. Right. So, uh, going on with the question, uh, going along with the pranks... Uh, Nobody we... pranked me because I'm an adult <laughs> and I will sue. <laughs> they never prank me, they prank Misha because Misha is an idiot and 
takes the bait every time. So that's why they pranked him and they never pranked me. Because it didn't work on me. Because I was like, yeah, go clean that up. I'm like a dad, you know what I mean? I show up on a show, they, they fart when I'm doing takes and stuff. I'll be like, great, next. You know, so I never took the bait. I never took, I wasn't like the fish taking the bait. So like, there wasn't like any like, um, nope. in, neatest prank that nope. out of Jared or just nope. has done to you? No. Nope. <laughs> no? Nope. Nope. Okay, you do. Nope. You're, you're good to go then. No, I'm the grown-up. <laughs> Thank you Thank for your you. question, darling. All the best. Hey, what do you want? Yeah, you have to talk into the microphone for yeah. God's sake, otherwise they can't hear you. Uh, so, first of all, uh, I, I was the one that introduced my uh, supernatural to all my family. And now, literally, I have a supernatural family in my house. Wonderful. Uh, and also, I want to thank you for being so humble with us. I'm not humble. Okay. I'm the best. <laughs> I am the king. I'm Crowley. <laughs> And for the question, uh, what, what is your best memory about Supernatural and behind the scenes? Listen, my, my daughter was born on Jensen's birthday. Jensen's daughter was born on my birthday. And Jared has a son called Shep. Wow. We were close, we worked very, very hard, we played hard, and we're just so grateful that what we did touched so many people and continues to do so. But it's like the themes behind it, good, evil, family, brotherhood, all those things, they're good themes and there weren't a lot of TV shows that were about, you know, positive circumstances. So I had my back to you the entire time. Um, I got a nice ass, but it's like, you're in my face. I'm enjoying it from here, by the way. Thank you. But you know what I'm saying? It's like, it was a special thing to do. No shows go 15 years. No shows have that, and so many fans around the world, so many people. The Supernatural family is extraordinary. If you think we all had uh, causes for charity and stuff that we believe in, each one of us believe in. You know, Misha, I make fun of Misha all the time. He builds hospitals, he builds schools, he changes the world, one little piece at a time. And what happens is, when we have something we believe in, you guys step in behind us and you make it a thousand times bigger. And that's what we're so proud of, you know? You know, we, we, we've wanted to do things. Like my son, my middle son is diabetic. He has type 1 diabetes. And so I would sell t-shirts and then raise money for Camp Conrad Chinook. And you guys just buy the shirts and that's what you do. You know where it's going, you know what it's doing. And you make a difference and we appreciate that, you know? Just so they let you know. That's what the show's about, so. Thank you. Thank you. How can I help you? <laughs> How are we doing for time? We have eight minutes. We do? Maybe yeah. a little longer, we'll see. Yeah, no we can stay all night here. It doesn't matter. Hi. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm nervous. Uh, so, I've been watching you since your charm days. That's creepy, stop stalking. <laughs> and <I> mean, <laughs> you've been a really big inspiration for me because... What, um, you want to go out and kill millions of people? No. <laughs> you want to run hell? <laughs> It's an awful job. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I'm a little late. You know how you're looking at me right now, where you have to look up because you're so little? Yeah. That's how I feel talking to Jared. <laughs> you know he's six foot five? Yeah, he's so Right, I look like I'm five feet tall on that show. I'm not. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, you're much taller than I thought you were. And it's like, no, but he's literally six five, and the short one is six foot two. Yeah, yeah. Misha's, Misha's over six foot. Yeah, yeah. That's why I look like a midget in that show. <laughs> so like, what's your question? Oh, um, for your characters from all the shows, do... That's a big question. <laughs> do you, you like the mysterious and dark characters? <laughs> Sorry, just checking, tuning them in. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. And uh, do you like the dark and mysterious? Which or? ones do you like? Um, I love the Charmer Arnhem uh, character and Crawley. I love them. So there I, you go. I, <laughs> I like them too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See ya. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> what can I do for you? Super nervous. I'm in Supernatural, so it's pretty good. <laughs> okay. my Closer to was, the mic. My question was, I watched all 15 years and, 15. I would, and I would watch my daughter and tell her don't watch it that's too tough for you 
never listened. She said, I watch that 12 o'clock in the morning. How and old was she when she started watching? Uh, right now she's 28 years old. You think that's too young to watch no, Supernatural? No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> okay, my question is, uh, did they ever speak or did you ever think about making a spin-off? I mean, you yourself could do the no. spin-off. Spin-offs don't work. Supernatural. No, it doesn't work. Oh. What works, it should be a show, maybe a half-hour sitcom called O oh Crowley. <laughs> And that would be about it. But the, the truth is, the spin-offs don't work. And the reason why the spin-offs don't work is because it's about the Winchesters. And if you, uh, the reason why they love Castiel and they love Crowley is because we love the Winchesters. So you guys live vicariously through our love of the Winchesters. So we're really you. If you think about it, Crowley and Castiel are the good and evil of you. And the Winchesters are the Winchesters. Right? So it works in that way. But Castiel and Crowley on their own in a show doesn't work. Because you have to have the Winchesters to love. It's all about love, bro. It's all about love, I'm telling you. You're too awesome. You have the angels after you. I have other shows. You want to see me in a show? Watch another show. You want to watch Crowley? Watch Supernatural. That's the way to go. But thank you. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Come on, Spider Man. Where are you? So, my question is uh, between Kiplin and Crowley. <laughs> Who is your favorite to play as? And well, I'm not doing Crowley anymore, but I am doing Kipling. So which one do you think is my favorite? <laughs> <laughs> and was the kiss between you and Bobby real? Was it real? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> It's all over the internet already, mate. I mean, you're in Puerto Rico, you're not in Haiti. You can find it. And I, I love you as a kid. Thank you, I love you too, brother. Thank you for being here. So are you sponsored by Helen Hansen? You going, is that ski equipment? No, the, the thing, it says Helen Hansen. No, okay, go on. Thank you very much for like, coming here for Puerto Rico. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> I was about to say how much talk I was talking about. Come on. Um, I was going to say, Mary, thank you for coming to Puerto Rico. Like, like you're the first supernatural like, ass member like, I ever seen like, in real life. Like, I was seeing like, the show. We're like, even more fabulous than, than on television, aren't we? Yeah, like, I think what? Yeah. We're more fabulous than we are on television, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're all asleep at the back now. <laughs> so, like, thank you very much for coming here. Thank like, you. I hope that like, the other members go. Also I don't care about them. You got me. What do you say? <laughs> that, that's why I'm here. There you go. So, like, I was gonna ask the question, like, there's any other cast member from Supernatural or from other shows, to, like Firefly and all that, that you want to also like? Be in another show with. I have been lucky enough. Go watch Doom Patrol, you'll see my friends. <laughs> Go watch Doom Patrol, you'll see a lot of people I've worked with before. And I've been alive a long time. Trust me, I'm old. I've been doing this a long time. And the good news is you get to play with your friends the longer you stick around. So that's the way it is. Thank you. Wait and see. Go watch Doom Patrol. Now. Now. Go right now. Go watch Doom Patrol. I'm gonna, I'm Go now. It. Download it. Go. Go. It. Go. It doesn't matter. Go watch it now. Go. Bye. Hiya. You nice and warm in there? Mon cœur est très rapide maintenant. Oh. Parle français. Moi aussi. Qu'est-ce que tu veux? Sorry, I'm hyper fixed on your drumming passion. I've been kind of stalking your Instagram about that, and I've never got. By the way, that's not stalking. That's just Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> Like I put it there so you see it. Stalking would be finding pictures of me in my house. Yeah. Not so good, but go on. I just, I've always wanted to hear you 
playing the drums, but I've never gotten an opportunity. Would you ever do an Instagram live, a Facebook live, or whatever? I, I, I play drums. I've made a lot of records in my time. I've done a lot of concerts. If you look on the internet, you can see me playing drums. What seems live? Oh, live, yeah. I, I went on tour in 2017 with Robin Hitchcock for, for about a year. But I'll do it again. Yes. Now the pandemic's over, I've got a shot of doing it. So. Awesome. But thank you, my darling. Right. Pleasure. You too. A bientôt. A la prochaine. Hi. I love the way you're smiling all the time. Oh, yeah. I'm a nice guy. Yeah, go on. Uh, how was your uh, religion, the colleague relationship with the, the boys and all the way to the like come from the crossroads, demon, king of hell, and all the way through to the season eight. How was it? Yeah. You tell me. Oh, for me, it was You great. watched the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, you tell me. Thank the, you. The, 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 human, the humanity that the Kali got. Ah, uh, the was humanity. Awesome. I like it too. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Hi. Mark. Yeah. We've run out of time. No, we haven't. Let's go. Come here, quick. All right, we have to count the line, but hurry up. What do you want? I'm a little small, sorry. <laughs> I have to say I'm so honored. I have you, like, right here, right now. <laughs> you have to talk into the mic. Go on. Um, two questions really quick. Also, yeah, I'm really... <laughs> okay. So I'm also going to say thank you for... I started seeing Supernatural. Still not a question. Like... Tell me the question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what series or TV or movie or application would you like to do in the future? Can't tell you because I may be in it. <laughs> Seriously, every time I've ever, I don't say anything. I knew I was going to be in Doctor Who before I was in Doctor Who. Oh. And people ask me that question, I'm like, ooh, I don't know. Maybe Doctor Who someday. <laughs> but i got to be careful, so. But you'll see there's new things coming. Awesome. All right, so thank much. you, my darling. Hey. Are you a gang? Oh. Uh, yeah, again. What's the question? Okay, uh, first thing that I'm going to trust here was my English. Well, then, whoever's going to say it, say it. Okay. And my friend's question is, if there, if anyone ever made a game about Supernatural, would you they be did, interested many. in going back to play Crowley? Uh, no. No, I did Crowley, I'm good. But thank you, I appreciate it. Come here, you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chris <laughs> That's a statement, now ask a question. Uh, uh, was there a different way that Crowley was going to go off in season 12? And what made them stay? Yes, he rewrote it the way I wanted to rewrite it, so it was good. Thank you, sir. There really was a different way, but uh, it worked was, out was much it better. Was it a better way or was it? No. Like, oh. So it went out a good way, so I'm happy. Yeah, thank you so thank much. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Sorry, who did you come as? <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you couldn't I afford a decent costume? <laughs> That's the reason why they dress as Castiel, you know that, right? So it costs 20 bucks. Got a nice suit and a tie. Really expensive. Go on, what's your question? If Crowley hadn't died before Jack was born, what do you think he would think of Jack? Wouldn't care. <laughs> Probably work out how to kill him. Because he's Cass's son? Nah. Okay. I don't, I, don't, I don't mess with the streams. Okay. That's good fan fiction to write, though. I'll consider it. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. Never understood those questions. <laughs> Your heels are a little higher than his, though. Um, I was wondering, I, you already talked about like your ideal ending, but I was wondering if they hadn't killed off Crowley, we know the writers kind of ran out of ideas for mm -hmm. him. What would your ideal storyline for him? It wouldn't be one. I do what I do when Just I do it. <laughs> I did what I did when I did it, and I'm happy to have done it. The truth is, I love the fact that we still talk about it, but I did what I did. Now go watch Doom Patrol. Bye. Oh. <laughs> I don't have a question for you right now. Oh, hi. It's really simple. What? Uh, in 2017, uh, Puerto Rico was hit by it. I know. Got destroyed. Everything. I wasn't a fan. Yeah, apparently, we sent, apparently we sent you, what was it, paper towels? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hey, a lot of people hate that stuff. Yeah, trust me, we do too. So my son, he tells me, we gotta watch this uh, series on TV. He says, there's a guy there, he's a, kind of a dick. Yeah. That's, that's what me. he said. That's me. <laughs> and then I'm like, you know, why, why do I have to watch this? Because you're under pressure, you need to watch it. And the guy reminds me of you. <laughs> so I'm like, right now, I watched it, and I will always remember that do you care? Can you control that dog? You're like, no, he's just bigger. 
There you go. Remember Martin that? Martin Speaker, yeah. Uh, yeah, so because of that, I want to thank you. Oh, man. Because I, got, I, I did everything. I appreciate it, brother. Okay? Hey, do it. <laughs> thank you, brother. Yes, and I apologize for the paper towels. <laughs> Someday we'll grow up and work out what we're supposed to be doing. And when that comes around, they'll realize just how cool Puerto Rico actually is. Love the makeup. Thank you. <laughs> My question is, you know, in between your two characters, Valerie and Kipling, what would you think would happen if they encountered each other? I never crossed the streams. <laughs> I never crossed the streams. But, if but you know what? Why don't you write it? Write it. That's what fan fiction is for. It's the best. Some of the best stuff's in fan fiction. Trust me. But yeah, I never crossed the streams. They're different things, different times, different universes. I think that was me because probably. Yeah, well, you never know. Yeah. Wait till you see season four of Doom Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> no, Crowley is not in season four of Doom Patrol. So you know. Oh, I'll oh, be a nice try. Hey, anybody else? We're almost done. If you ever had a role in the show The Boys, who do you think you'd play as? I wouldn't. That's not my, that's not my show. Because the trouble is, is, if you're in the genre that I'm in, you have to kind of pick which, which direction you're in. I would, wouldn't imagine I'd be in The Boys being on a... DC show right now, so it's really difficult to, to do that. I'm more interested in seeing what Gaiman is doing in, in Sandman and other stuff like that, so we'll see how that goes. Alright. Oh god, no. No, let's no. not. Let's not. Go on. Uh, my first question is, so I know First question, your only question is... So I know you're a musician. Oh, do you have any upcoming no, not right now. I'm building a studio right now, so that's kind of fun. No, come on. Come on. I'll answer the question. No. No, don't throw you out. Then the answer is no. Oh. So you should take him on secretly without asking me. That's the trick. Look, she pictures of me for half an hour. All right, next question. I've got to, I've got to wrap up with this. Hey, you right? Not you, her. Oh. <laughs> she was tripping over the thing. Come on. Question. Yeah, so, with you being on a sci-fi show, a supernatural show... Hey, I mean, all of them. I mean, Battlestar Galactic. Yeah. Right? I am Supernatural, and now you're doing Superhero with Doom Patrol. Yeah. Have you ever um, thought about having or doing uh, something different, like something out of the genre? Yes, I have done many things out of the genre. My first film had seven Academy Award nominations. It's called In the Name of the Father. It's got nothing to do with the genre. Right. So when the work comes that I like, I do it the best I can. All right. and but so they tend to think of me for genre stuff. Yes, and you've been also in a lot of TV shows. Do you think you can be in also on movies? Yeah, I've been in movies and I will be in more movies. Yes, awesome. But I'm quite a busy on television. All right. But thank you for your question, my friend. Listen, seriously, I've got to tell you something as we're wrapping up here. Yeah. Um, we make television in front of our friends. We don't make our television in front of you. We do what we do, 150 of my friends. We hope it's good, we put it together. We, you know, uh, it goes to post-production, they put music on it, they make it funnier. They do all these things and then you get to see it. But we don't get to be with you when you see it. I don't come around your house and watch it, I wish I could. There'd be a lot of houses to come to. But the truth of the matter is the reason why we come to conventions the reason why people like, like myself come to conventions is because we get to see our audience and they get to abuse you and, uh, and have fun with you and, and genuinely meet my audience, which to me, you know, I come from live performance. I come from having an audience. And you know, you go ooh or ah or laugh or smile, whatever you do, it has an effect on my performance. And so I come to these because I want to see your faces, I want to meet you, I want to hear what you think, I want to give you a hard time. Um, especially if you come dressed as Castiel. <laughs> but the truth is, I love doing this, and there is nothing that can stop me doing this. So, when I'm invited, I come. I want to thank Ricky, and I want to thank everybody here. And I want to thank you for putting up with me. And thank you guys so much. You're a wonderful people, a wonderful country. And there's no better place for me to be today. I love you all so much. Thank you for this life. Mark, we freaking love you.